What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and in this video we're going to be looking at the key differences between the iPhone 10 and the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So straight up, why are we comparing the Note 8 which is a large device to the iPhone 10? Well, these devices are the best offerings from the manufacturers and this comparison will be the best versus the best. So let's get the size out of the way straight away. The Note 8 is the larger device overall. It's almost 19 millimeters taller, but what's interesting is that it's only around 3.9 millimeters wider. Now uh, that does come down to the curved sides of the Note 8, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. And it's also around 0.9 millimeters thicker. In terms of the weight, 21 more grams on the Note 8. And all of these reasons are because the Note 8, as expected, has a larger display, 6.3 inches versus 5.8 inches on the iPhone 10. Now, both devices have minimal bezels, which is great to see. Uh, 2017 is definitely the year of minimal bezels. You've got large displays without increasing the size of the bodies too much. And both devices also have OLED technology, which means you're gonna be getting vibrant colors as well as deep blacks. Up until now, iPhones have been having LED backlit displays, which are good, but they're never as good as OLED displays. This time we finally have an OLED display and it's gonna be comparable to the Note 8. In terms of resolution, however, the Note 8 does have a higher resolution even with that larger display. So that's 2960 by 1440. And that comes to roughly about 522 PPI. The iPhone 10 has a 2436 by 1125 pixel resolution. Apple always do that with some of these random numbers, which I do not get. And that's roughly about a 558 pixels per inch density. Now, both of these do have a very high pixel density. The Note 8 edging out here slightly. So if you do have the device up close and if you're going to be using it for things like VR, then the Note 8 is going to be a little bit better because of the high pixel density. Now, the iPhone 10 does have 3D touch. Now, that is a pressure sensitive display, so you can press hard anywhere on the display and it's going to give you more options than things. On the Note 8, you only have the home button area, which is pressure sensitive and you can press down hard on. The iPhone 10 now has a swipe up feature to go home. So that's a change here because there is no longer space for a home button. Now moving on to the bills, they've never been so similar. We've got metal frames with glass panels on the front and back. So both of these very, very premium. The Note 8, however, is curved from the front as well as the back. And this, as we were discussing earlier, does give it a larger display uh, with a narrower body than you would expect for this screen size. Both of these devices have water and dust resistance, IP68 on the Note 8 and IP67 on the iPhone 10. It's great that both of them do have this feature. In terms of colors, you do have some more color options available on the Note 8 compared to that of the iPhone 10. Now moving on to the internals, the Note 8 has some of the fastest processors available on the Android side. So you've got the Snapdragon 835 or the Exynos 8895, depending on your location with six gigabytes of RAM. The iPhone 10 has Apple's brand new A11 Bionic chip. Now this is supposed to be very, very fast and efficient. And it also supports augmented reality, which should be really good. It'll be interesting to see how Apple uh, implements this going forward. Uh, but uh, in terms of speed differences and things, we are gonna have to do some speed tests side by side of both devices to see which one is better. If you guys wanna see that, then make sure you have subscribed to the channel. In terms of RAM, we're not sure exactly how much RAM the iPhone 10 currently has. Moving on to storage, the Note 8 comes in three different sizes, 64, 128, or 256 gigabyte options. You can expand that storage as well, so you do have a micro SD card slot, which is definitely nice to have. On the iPhone 10, you've got either 64 or 256 gigabyte options. You cannot, however, expand the storage on the iPhone 10 as you've never been able to do on iPhones. So the Note 8 in terms of storage would get the advantage here. Now moving on to the cameras, things are very similar here in terms of the setup. We've got dual 12 megapixel cameras on both of these which both support optical image stabilization. And they also work in a similar way where you're gonna get a wide angle camera as well as a telephoto camera, which is gonna give you two times optical zoom. You've got an F1.7 aperture versus F1.8 
on the iPhone 10 when it comes to the wide angle camera. But when it comes to the telephoto camera, both of these have an f2.4 aperture. Both devices also have a feature to blur the background on images. It's called live focus on the Note 8 and on the iPhone 10, it's called portrait mode. Now on the Note 8, you can blur the background after the fact, this is something you can't do on the iPhone 10. However, the iPhone 10 does have a portrait lighting feature which is going to be in beta initially and it's going to let you adjust the lighting effect of your images it looks very promising you will be able to adjust the lighting after the fact too with the note 8 it does take images from both the wide angle as well as the telephoto camera this is definitely useful so you've captured both of those in case you do want to get the wide angle shot too now obviously we'll be doing a super SAF style camera comparison as soon as the iphone 10 is out commercially and if you want to see that first, then make sure you have subscribed and switch on notifications. Now, moving on to video, this is where things get interesting. Once again, the Note 8 takes some great video. I've done lots of camera tests here on the channel. So definitely do go ahead and check those out. And you've got 4K at 30 frames a second. You've also got slow motion at 720p at 240 frames a second. Now, the iPhone 10 actually looks very impressive with 4K at 60 frames a second and 1080p video slow motion at 240 frames a second. Now, this looks very, very promising and I can't wait to test out the iPhone 10 because of the video features that it has. I believe it's the first smartphone with 4K at 60 frames a second. I may be wrong, but it's definitely one of the first and it looks very, very promising. In terms of the front-facing cameras, the Note 8 has an 8 megapixel front-facing camera with an f1.7 aperture and it has autofocus with a 1440p video recording. The iPhone 10 has a 7 megapixel front-facing camera with an f2.2 aperture and 1080p video recording, but it's got facial recognition. So this is going to allow you to have a portrait mode. So it's going to blur the background from the front-facing camera as well. And you'll also have the portrait lighting effects too. These will be in beta initially. And that is definitely nice to see. There's also an emoji which is gonna track your face and represent emojis to that effect. So uh, if you're into that kind of thing, then that's also there. We'll have to do some detailed camera comparisons between these two to see which one of these takes better selfies. Uh, but both here are very, very promising. Now, in terms of the operating systems, we've got Android version 7.1.1 with Samsung's Experience skin on top currently on the Note 8. The iPhone 10 is going to come with iOS 11 out of the box. Now, obviously, it's Android versus iOS. A lot of it comes down to personal preference, so I'm not going to go into a battle here. Android, I find, is a little bit more flexible, and you do have some additional features with the Samsung Experience skin, such as a multi-window as well as app pair which is going to allow you to open two apps uh, in multi-window with just one touch but ios i find is a little bit more simple and straightforward for a lot of people and you also get updates quicker from ios compared to that on android when it has a skin like the note 8 has this once again is going to come down to your personal preference now let's move on to the additional features that both devices have. In terms of unlocking the device, the Note 8 has a fingerprint scanner which is at the back. The position is slightly inconvenient and this is something that a lot of people have discussed. But you do have an iris scanner and you also have facial unlock so you can point it at your face and that is going to unlock. But it's not as secure and it can be fooled by a picture. Some people have also tried this. The iPhone 10, this time around, we have no touch ID. So this has been removed because of the bezel-less display. A lot of people were thinking that touch ID is going to go on the back, but this is not the case either. We now have face ID, which is a form of 3D facial recognition. Now, what's funny is that uh, on the actual demo, it failed, uh, but uh, it does look very, very promising in terms of how it's going to scan your face and it shouldn't be fooled by a picture. How convenient this is going to be compared to just touching the home button, we'll have to wait and see. But this is supposed to be quite a secure form of facial recognition, so it should work pretty well from what Apple are telling us. Now, the iPhone 10 still has stereo speakers as well, which is great. So one on the earpiece and one at the bottom. So you've got better sound on here compared to the Note 8, which has a single bottom facing speaker. You don't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the iPhone 10. However, this is something that you do have on the Note 8. Now, although you will get the dongle on the iPhone 10, which is going to go from lightning to the 3.5 millimeter, 
uh, it, it can be inconvenient for a lot of people and just something to consider. Uh, on the Note 8, as well as the 3.5 mm headphone jack, you do get AKG earphones out of the box, which do sound pretty good. For the personal assistance, you've uh, got Siri versus Bixby. Now, this would take a bit more of a detailed video in terms of which one of these perform better. Uh, I've been playing around with Bixby and it does allow you to take some deep actions, which I hope Siri will be getting at a later point. The Note 8 does have the S Pen as well. This is a unique feature and not something that you're gonna find on many of the devices. Uh, it can be very, very useful. It's got features such as off-screen memo, which is gonna let you jot down a quick memo on the display even when it is off and that's gonna stay on there because of the always on display. You've got live translate so you can hover over things and it's gonna translate those uh, in real time. Uh, and it's also gonna convert currency for you. And generally with the S Pen for signing documents and things like that, this is gonna be quite useful. Uh, you've got nothing like this on the iPhone side. Now moving on to the batteries, the Note 8 has a 3300mAh battery, it supports fast charging as well as fast wireless charging. With the iPhone 10, we we're not sure of the exact size of the battery as yet. Uh, Apple have said you're going to get two more hours of standby time on it compared to the iPhone 7, so it's difficult to say what the exact size of the battery is and how it's going to impact because of the high resolution display. Uh, we'll find out what the exact size is once somebody pops open an iPhone 10, which is not going to be any time soon. But the new thing on the iPhone 10 is that it does support wireless charging. This is the first on the iPhone side so it's great to see that we now have wireless charging. It also supports fast charging. Uh, this is something that wasn't really mentioned on the keynote but something that was uh, briefly highlighted on the notes. What we will do is we'll do some more battery tests and things as, as soon as we've got the commercial version of the iPhone 10 in hand and we'll also do some charging speed tests to see which one of these charges faster. Now finally, let's look at the price. The Note 8, a lot of people were complaining about the price when it uh, was initially announced. So we're looking at $950 in the US or £870 here in the UK. Now this is not gonna seem as bad when we look at the prices of the iPhone 10. So for the same base model, 64 gigabytes, we're looking at roughly about $1,000 in the US or even a thousand pounds here in the UK. Normally in the UK, as you can see on the note, because of exchange rates, uh, the price in the UK is usually slightly less, roughly about 10% less. Uh, and this time around, Apple have decided to keep it the same price as dollars. So people in the UK, like myself, are really being screwed over. So this is something that I'm personally quite disappointed about. And it is a very, very expensive device. If you go for the 256 gigabyte model, you're gonna be looking at around $1,150 or 1150 pounds. So a very, very premium, but very expensive device here on the iPhone 10. The Note 8, definitely also expensive, but it is a little bit cheaper compared to the iPhone 10. In terms of release, the Note 8 is shipping worldwide from the 15th of September. Some people have already got it. I've currently got mine. With the iPhone 10, it's gonna be available for pre-order from the 27th of October, a day after my birthday. So hopefully I'll get a lot of money for my birthday because this is definitely gonna set me back. And it's gonna be releasing on the 3rd of November. So those are the dates that you need to put into your diaries. So there we have it guys, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 versus the iPhone 10 comparison. Both very, very premium devices with a premium price tag. What do you guys think of these devices? Which one would you go for? Definitely drop me a comment below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. If you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe and switch your notifications. There's plenty more content coming up on here. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV. I'll see you next time.